your divine fire. Let it fill my life right now. Open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I ask for your fire this morning. Let your fire fill my life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I need your fire from above. Without your fire. Both right now in the name of Jesus, God of fire, send down your fire, send down your fire in the name of Jesus. Let your fire invade this place in the name of Jesus. Let your fire fill this place in the name of Jesus. Your divine fire fill this place in the name of Jesus. The Kapula, the Boki, the Hai, the Hara, the Bushin, the Hina, and the Bush. Leva him a hand of a bush in the head of a Korea hide of us in the heart of us. Holy Ghost for your fuel, this place in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Holy Ghost, do it again. Do it again. Holy Ghost, fire. They can pull my hand out of the box. We are hiding. Hold my hand out of the box. 
Fill her with your fire. Renew our life. Renew our strength. Renew us. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Renew us in the name of Jesus. Give her your fresh fire this morning in the name of Jesus. We need your fire. We need your fire. We need your fire. Holy Ghost fire. Release your fire. Release your fire in our midst right now in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, we exalt you, we exalt you. Our Father, we worship you, we say thank you. You've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. That is why your name is forever. I'm going to join me to sing that song this morning. I want you to sing it from the depth of your heart. You've been faithful, Lord. From the head. Baba, you've been faithful, God. Oh, yeah. from the edges back. Oh, Jesus, that is why your name. Oh, I like Baba. Is forever. Church, are you ready this morning? Oh, sing, you've been faithful, God. You you've been faithful, God. Oh, from the edges, from the edges, oh, that is why I'm Forevermore is 
forever. Oh, sing, you've been faithful, God. You've been faithful, God. Oh, faithful is our God from the ages. Oh, that is why your name. That is why your name. Oh, is forever. Is forever. That is why for my good, all things will work for my good, and without understanding, I come before him and begin to worship, wherever you are this morning, open your mouth and begin to celebrate him, worship him this morning, celebrate him with a beautiful song, worship him, worship him, worship him, because he is God all by himself, without you, you will still remain God, he is God in his own class, there is nobody that can stand by him, there is nobody that can stand against him, he is our strength, he is our shield, he is the heaven, he is the earth, he is all that we have, he is all that he is, so open your mouth and begin to worship him this morning. Your 
I'm walking to God this morning, wherever you are, just celebrate God, celebrate God this morning. Are you ready to dance this morning with your dirty shoes? Are you ready to dance this morning? Hallelujah. Receive our praise, O oh God. Receive our praise, O oh God. Oh, glory and honor we bring unto you. Receive our praise, O oh God. Father, receive our praise. Receive our praise, O oh Lord. Oh, receive our praise. Receive our praise, O oh Lord. Glory and honor. Glory and honor we bring unto you. Oh, receive our praise, O oh Lord. This morning, the Bible says in the presence of God there is fullness of joy, and at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah! Who was the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Hallelujah. To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Hey. 
I feel like dancing. I feel like dancing. I feel like dancing. I feel like dancing. Oh, I feel like dancing. I feel like dancing. Oh, I feel like grab a I feel like grab a It's on the live around. It's on the live around. Oh, he makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has the finest. Oh, he turns my life around. Oh, he turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the finest.
gave your blood, you gave your life for us to be alive today. You washed us from our sins, our iniquities, even though you knew that we never knew you then. But your love has brought us close to you. We thank you, Father. We are not here because we are righteous. We are here because you saved us, because you redeemed us. And we give all the praises to you, Lord. We surrender to your will and to your way. Have your way in our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we invite you into today's word. The word is God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was made flesh. And he dwelled among men. Lord, let your word dwell among us today in the name of Jesus. That all of us will go from level to level in the name of Jesus. Let your grace be multiplied. Lord, I yield myself to you this morning. Make me your oracle this morning. May I speak from your table of grace, from your altar of grace. Let nothing that will proceed from my mouth grieve you, Holy Spirit. I yield my spirit, soul, and body again. Lord, make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. That whoever, Lord God, that will heal me today, Lord, their life will be transformed to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I say somebody praise the Lord. Wow. We've been talking about divine provision since the month of May. And like we know, May is the fifth month in the year. And five is the number of grace. And I know we've been experiencing provision by the grace of God. This morning, as we progress, we're going to take it to a higher level. Um, this is the fourth um, week, so we, this is Divine Provision Part 4. Divine Provision Part 4. We did 1, 2, and 3 last week. Uh, by the way, uh, I was meant to understand that um, our live broadcast last Sunday couldn't go live um, because of some technical hitches, but I know that the video has been uploaded. So I will I encourage you to search on the trail and you will see divine provision part three it was a, a teaching again just like part two and today we're in part four what we are, uh, by the grace of god and by the leading of the holy spirit i want to go back to the beginning back to the beginning there is a principle in theology that we call the law of first mention what it means that any topic at all that you are dealing with in the Bible and you do not know how to settle it, you first of all trace where it was first and foremost mentioned in the Bible and you look at the principles around it. So this morning we are going back to the book of Genesis to see the first place there was provision or the word divine provision came into the picture. But before then, I want to summarize a little bit what we've done in these first three weeks. We thought about the fact that God did not or does not want us to lack. God never planned that man should lack. That was why before he made man, he first of all created the heavens and the earth and everything therein. Everything was settled. Then he brought in man on the sixth day. And he told man to take charge. He told man to multiply. He told man to, to replenish. He told man to reproduce. But something happened. Why are we now in lack? Because sin stepped in. The devil came in and deceived man. I know somebody will say, no, it wasn't man that the devil deceived. That he deceived the woman. Yes, but the man was the one giving charge. Have you noticed that when God was giving Adam instruction? He had not created Eve. Do you notice that? So that means that Adam left his primary assignment of being an influencer to Eve. And God came, the devil came and deceived Eve. So when the devil deceived Eve, it, God did not react. It was until Adam came and submitted to the influence of the person he was supposed to influence. That was when God stepped in. And God didn't ask Eve what happened. God asked Adam. So Adam now parried the question. But that was 
as well. That's not where we're going to. So the point we're making here is that God created us to live in abundance, not to lack, to have everything. And so many places in the Bible, he kept on saying it. You know, I wish above all things that you shall prosper, be in health and and uh, and uh, be in health and uh, uh, that you should prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. You know, and I remember again I, I, when I read uh, the book of Psalms and I hear David says, I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. It's very, very profound. I personally, I have experienced it. I still experience it. I still see God intervene in my life in many areas and many times that I do not know where my help will come from. Even when it pertains to my children, he will bring solution. Then I remember that we said that divine provision is not only about material things. Divine provision is also about your peace. It's also about your husband. Are you getting a husband or getting a wife? It is provision. So we said all those things, but this morning we are going to talk about divine provision from the angle of the first mention. So we're going to look at Genesis 22 from verse 1. I call this part the test. The test because it's about how God provided for Abraham. But before he got to the place of that provision, he went through a process. And many of us, the problem we have is that we do not like going through processes. We have said here so many times, even the set man in the house, Pastor Basil, I remember that I, uh, he said once, and I know I've repeated it a lot of times, that the process of a miracle de demands for two things, or two personalities, the divinity and the humanity. God does not intervene in our life without our permission. So before God gets into your life, he will take your permission, and that permission he will take is first of all by getting your attention and probably he'll give you a task to carry out. If you carry that task according to his instruction, God will definitely step in. Praise God. This morning, like I said, we are going to look at the first time we got the word divine provision. They say literally. So we read the book of Genesis chapter 22. I will read from Amplified Version. And I will go through it then. I would like us to go through it verse by verse because I'm teaching and we are going to look at it because a lot of times people go through processes, people go through hard times or they are seeking for God's intervention but we do not want to go through the process and we do not know what to do. We've been teaching since but now we want to learn from our father Abraham who we call the father of faith and the Bible said that Abraham pleased God because he had faith and the Bible said that we can never please God except we have faith. So we are going to teach it from now how to demonstrate our faith which will attract divine provision. Praise God. In the book of Genesis chapter um, book of Genesis chapter 22 from 1 verse 1 it says and after this thing, uh, after these events God tested and proved Abraham and he said to him Abraham and he said here I am. God said Take your son, mark this word, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Your son, your only son, Isaac. He called it by he, God called Isaac by name. He said, Which you love. Go to the region of Maria, Moria and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and then began the trip to the place of which God has told him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. And Abraham said to his servant, Settle down and stay here with the donkey. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I and the young man will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on the shoulders of Isaac, his son. And he took the fire, the fire pot in his own hand and a knife. And the two of them went on together. 
And Isaac said to Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am. Abraham answered him, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, See, here we, ha here we are, the fire and the wood, but there is no lamb for the bond sacrifice. And Abraham said, My son, God himself will provide a lamb for the burnt offering. So the word, so the two went together. When they came to the place of which God has told him, Abraham built an altar there. Then he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on the wood. Abraham stretched forth his hand and took hold of the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he answered, here I am. Here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear and revere the Lord. Since you have not heard back from me or begrudged giving me your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and glanced around. And behold, behind him was a ram caught in the ticket by the horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering and as his, and, an ascending sacrifice instead of his son. So God, so Abraham called the name of the of the place the Lord will provide, and it, and it is said to this day, on this mount the Lord will the Lord will be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from okay, let's stop here. Let's stop here for now so that we can so this is a man who was hundred years old. Praise the Lord. Please follow me. Don't fall asleep as I teach. I would like everybody to pay attention. This is a man who was 100 years old, a servant of God, who has been diligent. He found favor in the Lord and he asked God, I need a son. But before now, his wife, Sarah, had compared him to sleep with his servant, his maid, and they had a son called Ishmael. In the previous verse, in the previous chapter, chapter 21, Sarah compared Abraham to take away, to send away that son born from the, from the maid. So practically, Abraham has given away the old son, the first son, in quotes. Now he has, God now answered him and gave him a son called Isaac. After all this, God now called Abraham and said, look, I want you to sacrifice that your son, your only begotten son. It's very, very clear. So, I don't want you to go and look for Ishmael. I don't want you to go and get another person's son. I don't want you to go and conquer somebody. I don't want a slave. I want your son, your only begotten son. Mind you, at the age of 100. So, we are talking of somebody who has no means of having another child. And God says, that one you have, you begged me for it and I gave him to you. That is what I want. So I want, I'm setting this picture, I'm creating this picture so that we understand the position as Abraham was. It was a great test. It was a great test. Somebody has given you something. You know, a lot of us uh, behave like kids. Imagine when you give a small child something in his hands or her hands. Once you give it to them, they hold it. They will never release it to you. That is normal. That is human nature. That is human nature. So God was trying to test Abraham. I'm giving you this child. I want it back. But for me, I, I, I look at it. Is God wicked? I never had a, a child. So why give me a child? And I've tested having a child. I know the joy of, a, of fatherhood. And you now want to take that back, that child again. There will be a void in my life. That is human thinking. And Abraham is looking for an, an heir. Somebody who can inherit his heir. His, his estate. But there are lessons we need to learn from this. He says, take your son, your only son, whom you love. So we can imagine it. Many of us just have a pair of suits and we love it so much. Many of us will have just one pair of shoes and we love it so much. Many of us will have just one car and we love it so much. And we are saying, God, I want another suit. 
Praise God. I have a pair of suits and I am asking God to give me another suit. And God will tell me, give the one, that one single suit you love. That one single suit you like. That one single suit you have. He said, go and give it to somebody else. Does it make sense? From the five senses, it doesn't make any sense. And that is the position of Abraham. Because many of us will say, no, God cannot ask me for my son. Yes, God is not asking for your son. But God, you might be trusting God. Please, let's pay attention, please. You might be, you might have something. And you are trusting God for something bigger. And God tells you, that one you have, that single one you need, you love it. And, and you, you, it's like your life depends on it. God says, go and give it to somebody. You might not have much money. You're trusting God for money to start a big business. And God says, you have only 10,000. Go and take that 10,000 naira and feed somebody who is hungry. You are like, God, this is my savings. That's the position Abraham was in. The only son, the only begotten son. I want us to learn some things from this man. Because a lot of times we are reading Bible, we do not put ourselves in the picture. And I want to say this. Anytime you're reading Bible, don't read it as a book of history. Don't read it as a literature. Bible is a book that is like it's like more, many of us who like movies. Put yourself in the character. Put yourself in the picture. Like you're watching it in 3D. It makes more sense to you. So imagine that you are there as an observer and Abraham is just walking and God just tapped him and said, man, my friend, who is a friend of, he was a friend of God, he said, I want you to offer your son to me. Don't you think that you say, what? That's the right re reaction. God, what? I begged you for this son for almost 15 years. He made a promise to him when he was 75 and fulfilled it when he was 100. And after fulfilling it, let's say like a year after or thereabout, no, it should be more than a year after because for the young man to carry a piece of food and go all the journey, he's maybe up to 10 years. So, why take away this sum from me? God, is, is it fair? But God is never wicked. God is never wicked. He can never ask you to give what you don't have. He can never. He, he says, I can never make you to carry a load that is greater than you. He can never ask you what he has never given you. And most of the time, it has been found that for God to ask you to give what you have, what you have is just what you need to go to the next level. Praise God. So, he now said in verse, in, 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 in verse 3, he says, they went to a, um, he says, I will direct you to a place where you go to. Um, I will get, because I want to pinpoint something from that story. Um, he says, and go to the region of Moria. The region of Moria. I want to take, take out something from there. The region of Moria is a country, a, a hillside country. It's a city built or a, a mountain on top of, it's, it's on top of the hill. It's a hill country. And this same Moria, because Isaac, what God was trying to create here, was the same picture he did. He was trying to give us a replica of what Jesus Christ was going to do. Isaac, at this point, was a picture of Christ. He said, take him to the region of Moria. And Bible historians have said that the, 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 Mount, the Mount, Mount Moria is on the same plane with Mount uh, Golgotha where Jesus Christ was crucified. Praise God. Jesus Christ was taken to Golgotha to be crucified. It was a mountain. Mount Moria is also on the same plane. So God said, take your son to Mount Moria and offer him as a bond sacrifice to me. Again, for you to see the coloration between this story, Isaac and Jesus, they went on a three-day journey three-day journey. And Jesus was on the tomb for three days. He went to hell and fought for our victory. God says, I offer Isaac to me. He is the... That, you remember I said that Genesis chapter 1 and 2 was the creation of the earth. In chapter 3, the enemy came and took it. From that chapter 3, 
God put in place a program to redeem mankind. So he's showing us here the picture of what is to come in the New Testament. Praise God. He's showing us picture in the Old Testament. In the same Genesis chapter 22, he's showing us the picture of what is to come in the New Testament. So he says, go on. they went on a three-day journey. It was when it was three days that they got there. Praise God. Then, Abraham did something again. He told the servant, mind you, you are about to go and kill your son. The right thing to do is to take him in secret. He didn't enter into any agreement with anybody. He took two servants and said, follow me. Because the Bible said that from the mouth of two witnesses, two or more witnesses, a case is established. So this guy took two servants. So he cannot deny uh, 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 not killing the son because when the servants get home, Sarah will ask them, where is Isaac? They say, Ma, master took him and we went to offer sacrifice. When they came back, we didn't see him. So, we've seen that he's on the same plane with Golgotha. Then, he asked him to give him a burnt offering. Burnt offering. There are types of offerings. We have peace offering. We have sin offering. We have um, uh, burnt offering. The difference between all the offerings and burnt offering is that in burnt offering, you that is making the offering does not benefit from it. When you burnt it whole, all of them come to ashes. But in other types of offerings, when you burn, burn them, you don't burn them completely. They are partially burnt. So in that case, the person who offers the offering will eat from the offering. Do you understand this, this story now? So, but God says, I want a burnt offering. I want a burnt offering. You understand? So, the different, the, the, what is happening is you have something. You have something. And God says, give it away. He's not asking you to give it so that you benefit from it. He's asking you to give it away completely. God will ask you to go and walk on the road and see somebody who cannot in any way benefit you and he's asking you to give him your car. He, he's asking you to give him something you have that is precious to you. In that case, you would look like, Lord, what is happening? That's what God is asking here for. That we live a selfless life. If you want God to give you divine provision, you get to a point in your life, you say, God, all that I have, all that I am, I am offering it to you and I'm ready to give it away, to give our life away, just like Christ did. Christ offered himself as a living sacrifice. The difference is that Christ, after giving his life, he has the power to take it back. Praise God. So, burnt offering, nothing remains. But what we do in our life today is that we try to give offering. Either you want the man of God to remember that you are the one who gave the highest tithe, or you are giving somebody something, maybe in your neighborhood, let the person become uh, perpetually submissive to you. You understand? That is not a bond sacrifice. You give somebody money because you want to because you want to uh, have influence over the person. That is not burnt offering. That one is another type of offering you're giving. But when it is burnt offering, it is what you give and you release. You do not benefit from it. You might not see the person anymore. In fact, Abraham, if imagine, he did a three-day journey. After sacrificing the son, which is a burnt offering, it will dry up. Breeze will carry away the ashes. So he will have nothing as a remembrance of the offering he has given, which is different from what we do today. We give people things so that they can always remember us. It's not burnt offering. So when God asks you to give, please do a burnt offering. Give and forget that you've given, given it. Praise God. So I have said that there's a, there's, a, there's a similarity between Isaac and Christ. Christ went on a three-day journey. Isaac and Abraham, uh, they went, also went on a three-day journey. But God did not want Isaac to pay for the sins of the world. Praise God. Do you remember? He said, God said, my seed. He didn't say the seed of my son. God did not want Isaac. God would have allowed Isaac to be crucified. But mind you, Abraham was 
was a man. Isaac was not qualified to bear the sins of the world. That was why God stopped it. Ordinarily, God would have allowed Abraham to crucify Isaac and he would bring him back to life. But Isaac did not qualify. He said, the seed of a woman. He didn't say the seed of a man. Praise God. He said, the seed of a woman. Because God knew that him, God, will be the father, direct father of the seed. But it will come from a woman. He said, it won't be the seed of a man. Isaac was the seed of Abraham. So, when we are giving offering, we need to know the offering we are giving. We need to be very sensitive. I'm saying this because somebody said, how does it connect to divine provision? A lot of time, I've said it before and I'll say it again. God wants us to give. You know, he says, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Press down and running over. From the little you give. And when I say give, you know, I, I'm sorry that the church today, or a lot of men of God, have bastardized giving. So, I'm not talking about giving to the church. I'm talking about giving as a whole. You know, I see stickers that say givers do not lack. It's not true. Givers do lack. Because the Bible said that there are time and seasons. But let me say this. It is during the time of your lack that you should give more. Praise God. Givers don't lack. It's not true. Because when we say givers don't lack, it's like we are bribing God. It's like we are bribing God Oh, if I want something, I will give. No. We also need to know that we need to give with instruction. We don't just run around giving. We give by instruction. You see, wisdom is profitable to direct. Let me say again. I'm not deviating. I'll still get back to our story. There are times we give and we give ourselves into trouble. Yes. I said something that when we were treating part three. I said that there are a lot of times God allows us, even in Abraham's case, God is the one testing him. How do you go and start providing for somebody? God has said that, look, I want him to go through a lesson. You are cutting down his story, his lesson. Somebody is in secondary school. SS2. You promote him to SS3. He, will, he has failed one year. He didn't pass one year. Whatever he does, he will still go back to that lesson. In fact, let me say it. Somebody is in JS2. He didn't take JS exam, junior work, and you take him to go and take SSS exam. When he get to university, they will ask him where is your junior work exam. He will have to go back to take junior work. A lot of times, it's not everybody you see that you start solving every problem. We must solve problems with spiritual direction. Let's go on this journey. If we don't finish it today, we'll continue next Sunday. So, God did not want to sacrifice Isaac. He did not want. He just wanted to test. A lot of time, God will tell you to do something. He doesn't want it. He just wants to test you. And anytime, God doesn't, the Bible says that God doesn't owe anybody. He has never owned. He's the owner of a cattle on a thousand hills. I told, I, I, I used this quotation yesterday for my children. And they were rolling on the field. I just told them, look, I, you know, I, I told my son to give me the spaghetti he was eating. And he said, Daddy, I said, look, I said, Jim DK, I am the owner of a cattle in the whole of the rooms in this house. He rolled on the floor lying. He said, Daddy, but that is for God. I said, no, God says he's the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. But I said, I'm the owner of the food in the whole of this house. I'm God in my house. It's a mentality. So, the next point I want us to see here is, in, he says, let me check the verse. So he said, Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled the donkey, and um, he goes down um, on the third day. The Bible says, when he came to a place. And he came to a place. Mark that word. A lot of time, like I said, we keep on reading Bible, and we read it, and we just assume that we know the story. The every word used in the Bible is very, very instructive. And he came to a place. There is a place you get to in life. You must begin to take notice of things happening to you. There is a place you get to in life. You begin to ask yourself questions. There is a place you get to in life. 
you begin to reorder your steps. Assuming that every time something keeps on happening, you get into a relationship, it will crash. You get into a relationship, you crash. There's a time you get to you say, look, just like the prodigal son, the Bible says he came to his senses. So Abraham got to a place and stopped. Hello, you watching me? You need to stop. You need to stop and have a personal conversation with God. You need to ask yourself, who am I? What is my mission? What am I doing? Where is God in my life? What is God asking me or asking of me? Bible says, and they came to a place. They came to a place. At that point, you know what he did? He told the, uh, the, 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 the disciples or the, the servants, wait for me here. Wait for me here. There's a point in your life you need to be alone. There's a point in your life you need to separate yourself from the crowd. Je Jesus kept on doing it. Jesus kept on doing it. He would be walking. He get to a point. He said, please, multitude, wait here. One, two, three, follow me. He has an inner carcass. There's a time in your life you don't need to tell the whole world what your story is. You don't need to tell the whole world what your dreams are. There's a time for incubation. There's a time. You see, let me say this. We must develop personal intimacy with God. He is going to the mountain. He got to a place and told the servants, they don't understand. They don't understand the pain. They don't understand the grief. I'm about to go and kill my only son. He told them, wait here. Because can you imagine it? If those servants were there and Abraham just grabs Isaac to tie him, don't you think those, those young men will fight him? They will fight him. Most of the time, servants obey madam, not more than Oga. If they saw Isaac, uh, uh, Abraham trying to tie Isaac, sir, what are you doing? They will fight him because they will believe that they are fighting for God. And it's happening today. A lot of people believe that they are fighting for God. Abraham told them, wait here. Why? He did not want interference. It's a personal relationship between me and God. You cannot have a relationship on behalf of yourself and God. A man of God was preaching and he said, God does not have grandchildren. I've said this here so many times. The greatest gift you will have, whether you're a sinner or you're righteous, the greatest gift you will have is to have a personal relationship with God. I have a very, very queer idea because where I'm coming from, I know my story. When you meet people, don't tell them stop smoking. Don't tell them stop drinking. Don't tell them stop humanizing. Don't all those that is not your work. Your work is to lead them to Christ and help them to develop a personal, active relationship with the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is happy that they are smoking, so be it. But a lot of time we leave what we're supposed to do and we're trying to be God ourselves. Don't wear trousers. Don't do it. We're preaching religion. God is not interested. God is asking us, bring the people. It is my duty to change them. You cannot change anybody. In fact, you can't change yourself. So, we must develop personal relationships. And that is our mission. I, I, I'm happy that Eden Square is about making a total man. At Eden, God used to come down in the cool of the night to have personal relationship with, with, with Adam and Eve. Once I see a Christian who has prayer time and meditation time, I am good. No matter the struggles he's going, passing through, he will overcome it. But not about smoking, drinking, doing this, doing that. The Christianity is not about do's and don'ts. It is simple about a relationship with Christ. Praise God. So develop a personal relationship just like Abraham did when he gets to the nitty gritty, when he came to the time for him to, to, to do what he's supposed to do. He took aside the, the, the disciples or the, the servants and he knew there was a personal commitment. When God is asking you to do things, there are things God is asking you to do. You don't go to people to, for consultation. They will discourage you. If, it is your, if God is talking to you, if you know that God has spoken to you, don't call conference about it. Once that thing is in your hand to do, you do not need to consult. God, it is between you and God. Praise God. So, 
he got to a place. Do you notice something? Why they were going? The son now asked him, Daddy, we have the wood. We have the fire. Where is the lamb? At times I think that God is funny. God is the greatest comedian. People don't, uh, yeah. Uh, God is a comedian. He's a man that will tell you to go and do something. He won't give you full instruction. You know why? If he gives you the full instruction, you will not do it. In civil service, that is what we call for your information and for your necessary action. God gives us information part time. He doesn't give us complete. He takes you go to nature. What am I going to do in nature? He says, start going. Praise God. As you get to the junction, he will give you a bus that will take you to nature. In the bus, because if you are the point, the, the point here is this: He has told you to go to nature. The point is that. He that told you to go to nature is able to fulfill it. Then it is your duty to always interact with him. You are like an ambassador. He has asked you to go and do something. He is the one who sent you. Remember the first part of this message said that hey, the word provision is that which has been given to you to fulfill a mission, to fulfill a vision. So if God sends you on a mission, on a gives you a vision, he will give you the provision. But if you send yourself, you provide for the provide for it. It was God that told Abraham, go and sacrifice your son. Then this boy has a father. That's why I said that he wasn't, th- if that guy should be more than 10 years, I can't, if I cite the Bible, we should be able to know his age. He said, dad, we have the wood, we have the fire, which means that you understand what sacrifice is. You understood what is sacrifice. So where is the lamb? And the father made a confession. He said, the Lord, the Lord will provide. What is that thing God is asking you to do? Are you waiting until he brings all the finances? Are you waiting until he brings all the provisions before you start? No. If God tell you, move. Please move. That vision God has created in your heart, what you just need to know that it is time. And when it is time, don't let everybody come together. Don't let every resource come into your uh, account or in your pocket. What if God says, start? It might be to go to school and you are checking in your head. Oh, if I do, if I get a jump admission now, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? God is not in that business. God says, go to school. Go and buy jump form. If God has told you, please buy jump form. If God has asked you to go and do your master's, I don't know who is listening to me now. Go and buy the form. He said, go and do your doctorate degree. You might be looking at, well, how do I do it? God says, once it is from God, the word is obedience. We said this last time. Obedience. Abraham obeyed God and it was counted for righteousness. Obedience is righteousness. A lot of times we are saying, oh, how about if I fail? It's not you that failed if you are very sure that God has encouraged or have told you to do it. It's not your shame. What is shame are we talking about? When Christ, our master, did not look at the shape of dying on the cross, dying on the cross is the highest death, the worst death you can ever die. It's the most shameful death. And he gave himself to die on the cross for us. So what? why are we talking about shame? In fact, I've noticed something. People who do not have shame are the most successful people. The greatest problem we have is fear of failure. Oh, what will people say? Like people who commit suicide, they are the greatest cowards. It's because they have too much self-esteem. What will people say? Abraham was able and ready. He was ready to sacrifice his only begotten son. Begotten of, of at the age of 100. But I think that the man will say that if this man, God, God, can give me child at 100. He can give me at 120. But there is something again. I think there is a catch. Because God, when he says, I do not want Ishmael to be my heir, God said, no. A son from your line, a son from you will inherit your lineage. I'll give you a son. He didn't say, I'll give you sons. 
God. There was something in Abraham. He hears God and he understands or he understood God. God said, God didn't say, I'll give you sons. He said, I will give you your own son and he will inherit your lineage. So when God was telling him to go and sacrifice that same son, there is something in him. He has built up faith to a particular level. Just like Esther. If I perish, I perish. Maybe you say, at least it has been proven that I'm not barren. I'm productive. Whatever is the case. So God is your business. So, when they got to a place, we talked about that, the Bible said that they grabbed him and laid him on the altar. I would like God to see something in the book of um, Matthew 10. Matthew 10, verse 37. The book of Matthew 10, 37. And it says, Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. <laughs> Hello? You see where Abraham is coming? Abraham was going to. God is talking about Abraham. Anybody. Abraham had a son. That is the gift. And he didn't love the gift more than the giver of the gift. I remember that last, last Sunday here, I said that God is our source. Any other person is our resource. There are two different things. Your job is not your source. Your husband is not your source. Your friend is not your source. Nigeria is not my source. My source is God. Everything if you give me something today, you are not my source. You are my resource. There are two different things. The source provides the resources. Praise God. So, Abraham obeyed God's instruction and he has proven, look, I love my relationship with you more than what you're giving to me. A lot of people today love the creatures, creatures of God, but they do not love the creator. Praise God. They don't remember God. We don't, we don't remember God. We are so much engraved in, 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 in what we are going to get from him that we forget our relationship. The, whatever we get from God is as a result of our relationship with him. Praise God. So Abraham laid the son at the altar. When you get to the altar, it's about you. And let me say this. There is nothing we owe on earth. There is nothing that we're going to take to heaven. In my house, I, have a, I keep on telling them, and I say it everywhere. You cannot get out of this life alive. Nobody. Maybe we talked about, um, is it Enoch? But he still went somewhere. So you cannot get out of this life alive. And when we die, everything, your sons, your daughters, because some people are like, I don't have a son, I don't have a child. Yes, I have, a, I have children, and I know they, are joy, they give me joy. But the fact of the matter is that a time will come when those children will not even remember me. In quote, this morning I was telling my wife while we were driving to church. I told her, I said, look, we have three children. Only one is driving to church with us. The other two will come to church later. You why? They have grown. I said, very soon this one enter university. She won't be home. It will be two of us will be left alone. I said, that was how we started. A time will come, they will get married. They will now call me, call you daddy. So I'm, I'm not saying that having children are not important. Very great. I pray that everyone who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb, God will bless them. God will give you fruit of the womb. But I'm saying that we should not make it the focal point of our life that if you don't have them, your life is useless. There are greater things in life, or there's a greater thing in life, and that greater thing in life is the relationship with God. Praise God. He said, he laid him on the altar. In Hebrews 11, 17, the Bible said that he was ready 
to return the promised son as he has received it. Please, somebody get Hebrews 11. Let's, uh, when we get a lesson, let's Hebrews 11. That Abraham, when God was talking about uh, uh, ambassadors of faith, he said Abraham was ready to, res- to bring back the promised son. Are you there? Please read it for me. Verse, uh, verse, verse um, 17. By faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had faith was promised offered the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, praise God. Uh, he says, when he was hundred, he was already old, and he was ready to offer his promised son back to the one who gave him that same son. So he's not like a little child that you give something and ask that child to give it back to you. That child will say no. Just do the experiment. But when you know that the person who gave to you is if wherever this thing came from more can come from it. So Abraham was ready to return all that he got. What I get from this is that all you have now, all God has given to you now is not all that God can give to you. It's a test. Because the Bible says that he who is faithful with little, more shall be offered or given to him. So whatever God has given to you today, a lot, I see a lot of people, they ride good cars and those cars are like the center of their life. If you drive, come close to those cars. They will shout. Don't you see my car? Some people, it's their children. Even when you're correcting the child, say, why are you talking to my child like that? Some people, some women, once they get married, every other woman that is not married is inferior. The same thing with, with our men. Some people, some guys, they have good jobs. You are working in oil company or very international company. Then your mates, who are not as fortunate as you, becomes inferior. Meanwhile, that's your job is just a promotion. God is the one that brought it your way. Not because you are the most qualified. Not because you are the most righteous. He can. He said that I, 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 I promote one and I also bring down another. If God can give you that job, he can give it to another person. And he, had even, he can even give you a higher and greater job. But it depends on what you do with the little he has given to you. That's what Abraham, what Abraham noticed. Abraham said, if God can give me Isaac, and he's asking me for Isaac, I can actually give him back, and you give me something greater and better. It's just like maybe somebody has bought you a small car, you are, you are, you are employed in an office, and one day, the manager comes in, or the director comes in and says, hey, give me the car key. If your life is not based on the car key, on the car, you return the car to him. Why? You know that you have a good relationship with my director. If he's taking this car, he's taking it because there is something bigger that I want to exchange it for. Except when you do not have a good relationship with the director. I don't know if I'm communicating. It's all about relationship. So I'm saying that divine provision is about relationship. It's about relationship. He said, God does not want us to put our hope, our heart, on what we have or what he has given to us. Whatever God has given to you, be ready to release it. Is a test. It's a test. They say that an open palm is the only palm that is ready to receive. When you have a clenched fist, you cannot receive. So, whatever you have today, be willing and ready. God is asking you to release it. He now says in verse, um, in verse 13 of where we read, he said, Abraham looked up. He looked up. The Bible says, I look up to the hills. Where comes my help? Where, who are you looking up to? You do not have money. You are trusting God for provision. And you keep on running from pillar to post. There's nothing wrong in talking to people because we put it there. There's a time to talk to people. But before you talk to people, first of all, look at God. God is the only one who can talk to somebody. Do you know you can be in your house? Somebody will walk in and give you what you're trusting God for. Why? God will go and talk to that person. Like you said, he's the 
the owner of a cattle on a thousand hills. He has a way. He's, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. It is not where there is no way. It's where there seems to be no way. He makes a way. So meaning that there is a way. But there look like there's no way. So, so Abraham looked up. Praise God. He said there's a spirit in man. And the spirit of God gives understanding. For you, you just need to have a quiet time. Lord, what do I do about this situation? What do I what do I do? I need this. What do I do? Sometimes God they say that God can answer you in three ways. Yes, no, wait. Sometimes you say wait. And we don't like that word wait. We don't like it. But the waiting period is incubation period. Check in the Bible. All children that came from waiting, they were special children. Every child that came after a long time is a special child because there is a waiting. In that waiting period, God builds the, the, the environment. He, he, he enlarges the coast. Praise God. So he says, finally, Abraham tied Isaac I'm beginning to wonder. The guy must be shouting, Daddy, Daddy, what is it, Daddy? But he's already bound. Imagine me tie my son and put him on the, on, on, on the wood. Maybe I put kerosene everywhere. And he just like boom, grab his sword or dagger, any of them, just to raise it. He really had a voice of the angel. Abraham Wow. Were you ready to do it? You're a special man. I'm paraphrasing. Because the Bible is just a summary. Wow. Even angel, where they talk, will be envying Abraham. Because that angel, they are not human beings anyway. They don't have emotion. So, 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 which kind of person is this? So you are ready to kill your only son? See, for this. Immediately God started counting. Mind you, that time God, God started counting to him. Say, look, in blessing, I will bless you. He started telling him, your children will be like the sounds of the, the stars in the sky. Because you are ready to give your only because so you didn't withhold him from me. I am ready to bless you. I can walk with you. So many of us, God has given us small something and he want to promote us and God wants to check our heart. If I give this guy the millions or the billions, will he become proud? Will he be wicked? You know, people, oh, you are insulting me because I don't have money. Watch, when I get money, I will deal with you. Once you say, God knows that you are not, you are not ready. But Abraham was ready. So God has given you small and he's asking you, release it. God wants to use you to bless nations. And he's just giving you 5,000. And you're walking out from your estate gate. And the gate man there is drinking Gary. He doesn't touch you. It has, not, it has not come to your heart. How can this man be drinking Gary in the morning? Just a simple 200 naira. Go and buy rice there. Simple, simple. As simple as that. You still have your 5,000. Do you get me? Small test God brings to our way. But we don't, so many times you see them and you say, look, hmm, this great man drinking Gary in the morning. You think, look, ah, that is their life. You know, when they are telling them to work hard or to go to school, they didn't go to school. You know, you think it's because you go to school. There are people who have master's degree and they are hungry. There are people from great parentage. They are hungry. There are people that has good jobs. Sorry, let me say this. That you have a fantastic job is not a solution to your problem. There are people who are earning a million naira in a month, but the problem they have is two million naira a month. Which is better? I would rather earn 10,000 naira and have a problem of 900, 900 naira, 9,000. I have a balance. I can live comfortably. There are people who are making much money, but they don't sleep at night. Why? They are troubled. So, getting good job is not even the solution. Getting the highest pay is not the solution. There is nothing like having a good relationship with God. I still got get back to uh, okay, let me finish. By the time Angel did that, he told him, say, turn back. And Abraham looked. What are you looking?
is what are you looking at? What are you seeing? If you search, you will see. That was what he said in Matthew 7 7. He says, Seek, and you will find. Seek, 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 you will find. He said, Ask, it shall be given unto you. Praise God. What are you seeking? What are you? He said, Knock. Have you knocked on God's door? Have you seek? In fact, I think that you first of all seek, then you knock, then you ask. Then, and funny enough, when you join the three, they come to ask again. Ask, seek, knock. Praise God. Ask, seek, knock. He comes down to ask again. So the question is, have you asked God? What are you asking God? If you ask the right question, you get the right responses. Praise God. Then, Abraham saw a lamb. Abraham saw a lamb. A lamb is a better sacrifice material than a human being in the Old Testament. Praise God. And that lamb was there. God has provided that lamb before Abraham came to, came to the mountain. So once we obey God, provision has already been made. Please, do you hear me? Once you obey God, the provision has been made. It is your obedience that will take you to the provision. If you don't hear anything today, please write this down. Your, your obedience will take you to the provision. God has already provided obedience, obedience, obedience but the, 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 the key word is that you cannot obey what you don't know it is only when you know the Lord that God can talk to you, praise God I would have wanted us to go back but we'll do that next Sunday this was not the first time God provided to Abraham I quoted a scripture where he says um, uh, I was young, now I am old I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor he sit back for bread. You remember, I told you where the story started, but I like going back. If you go to verse 20, chapter 21, he started with the story of Hagar and Ishmael. After God brought Isaac, Sarah, Sarah made Isaac to chase away Ishmael and the mother. They went into the wilderness. He gave them God, let's <laughs> hey. Praise God. The Bible is good. If you study the Bible, if you study the Bible, see yourself in the Bible. Um, Genesis 21. Genesis 21. Let's read 14. Yeah, it says, uh, So Abraham called the name of the place the Lord. No, this is Genesis uh, 21. No, no, no. 21, not. Um, Genesis 21, 14. Uh, okay. Okay. He rose up early in the morning.
God. So praise God. Um, a mother he has a, a child, no food, no water. And he laid him, she laid him under some shrub, that is some, some grasses. And she didn't want to watch this child die. You are watching me this morning. You do not have food in your house. And you are wondering, how will I feed my family? I have been in that situation. But the Bible said, God says, I will neither leave you nor forsake you. What did Haggai did? She wept. They say she looked up and wept. When you look up, you are looking up to God. Mind you, Ishmael is not a child of promise, but still, he is still the seed of the righteous man. He has relationship with the righteous man, a friend of God. I want us to think about it. He wasn't the promised child. But the mother, mother, wept. And the boy was, was it? The same God that would speak to Abraham was the same God that the same angel that, that, that sent the angel that our uh, angel that spoke to Hagar. Abraham was the friend of God. God did not bring assistant angel to talk to Hagar. He brought a qualified angel. I think it must be angel, angel Gabriel, the information minister. Yes, now you know how to deliver messages. The same angel came to Hagar and spoke to her. He said, and, the, and God heard the voice of the youth, the child. Teach your child how to pray. The child wept. Let your children know how to also go to God. You are not the source for your children. You are the resource. Let your children know when to bypass you to go to God. Because as you are a child of God, your children are children of God. You are just a custodian. I do it a lot. Anytime I have need or my children have need to me that I cannot meet instantly and it's getting to my neck, I'll go to God and say, God, you are their father. I am just a guardian. Provide for them. It might be through me. It might be through another person. Praise God. I remember one time I, could, my, I was having issues with school fees. One day my youngest called me and just said, have you paid the school fees? I said, no, I have not paid. Said, I'll send money now. I didn't ask her. Why? It was God's leading. So, Haga, some of us say that is, they are the lineage from where we have our Muslim brothers. But they are still the son of Abraham. And he gave them food. He says, arise. He said, arise. Raise up the youth. Raise up. Raise up. Raise up. Raise him up. And support him with your hand. I'm reading Amplified Version. Raise him up and support him with your hand. These are, these, are, these, are, these are principles. Raise him and support him with your hands. For I intend to make him a great nation. So there's provision here. Then he now said, then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Hmm. Think about it. God opened her eyes. It's not the physical eyes. It's the spiritual eyes. Let your spiritual eyes be open. Let your spiritual eyes be open so that you can see the abundance of God's provision all around you. God don't need to go far to provide for you. Your provision is by your side. It's just that your eyes are closed. If you open your eyes, God will show you the marvelous things, the great and mighty things he has done around you. He's there for you. Praise the Lord. I said, somebody praise the Lord. He said, and she went and filled the empty bottle with water and caused the child to drink. And God was with the youth and he developed and he went into the wilderness and become a great archer. Praise God. I don't know if you see your story, in the, if you see yourself in this story, whether in the Abraham own or in the Haggai own. Sorry that I extended it but I felt that we need to talk about it. Next Sunday, we'll take another story in the Bible to conclude this matter before we now do some prophetical or utterances. God is calling us to a place that is higher. There's a place called better. Whatever you have today is just a minute of God was going to do in your life. But I want you to release. Release yourself. It might be your talent. It might be your intellect. It might be your time. It might be your material thing. God is asking you, release. 
and I will give you abundance. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. The problem is, are we ready? Are you ready to release? Release unto God and God will release back to you in full measure, praise and shaking together in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. As I pray, Lord King of Glory, as we deal with this matter of divine provision, may we experience it in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to know your voice. Help us to have a good relationship with you. Help us, Father, to meditate on your word and to hear you talk to us and give us the capacity to obey you, Lord. Then, we will inherit all that you propose for us. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are and you're watching me. The fact of the matter is that God is interested in you. You might watch this video after or you're watching me right now. God wants to do something bigger and greater in your life. But a lot of time we do not know him. We don't have a personal relationship with him. We've seen Abraham. He had a good relationship with God. So the point I'm asking you now, do you have a personal relationship with God? If you don't, I want to avail you of the opportunity to get connected to God. Maybe your lifestyle is not God or you've not given your life to Christ. This is an opportunity. It's a very simple procedure. I would just want you to stand up wherever you are or just put your hand on your chest and just repeat after me. Dear God, I thank you for this opportunity. I ask you, Lord, write my name in the book of life and cancel it from the book of death. I surrender to you. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Father, King of glory, help me, Lord, to know you more in Jesus' name. And let me pray with you. Father, King of glory, my brother, my sister, that are saying this, that have said this prayer, I ask you, Father, King of glory, to take them into your kingdom because your word said that those who come after you shall know in no way despise. Lord, take them in and strengthen them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, God Almighty, King of glory, let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. And for you there, I don't know what your needs are. You are trusting God for divine provision. May the Lord help you to discover your provision in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, okay. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are blessed this morning, rise up to your feet. Rise up to your feet and begin to wave your hands to God. Say, Father, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us from the throne of grace this morning. Open your mouth and worship him this morning. Open your mouth and worship. Say, Father, I thank you because I know that these words that have been released will drop upon a fat I saw this morning. It's going to germinate. It's going to produce results. It's going to bring forth results. I will not just be a hearer, but I will become a doer of the word this morning. And as I pray for yourself, say, Father, we thank you for your son. Open your mouth this moment and begin to make declarations to the life of the person that God has used for us this morning. He has watered us. Let's water him back this morning. Let's say his ground will never dry. His river will never dry. His well will never dry. There will be more increase. There will be more increase for him. More increase on all sides. Increase on all sides. Father, we ask that you bless him this morning. For in Jesus' most precious name, we are free. Hallelujah. So right now it's time for offering, wherever you are. The offering uh, will be details will be shown all over the screen. And for those of us that are here, please package your offering and your tithes this morning as we worship and we we'll drop our offering this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. Out of the abundance that you, Lord, have brought to us this morning, we brought this talking to you, our Father and our God, we ask that you receive it in the name of Jesus and let you return in abundance to us in the name of Jesus. At the end of everything, let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Receive our praise, O oh God. Receive our praise, O oh God. Oh. Glory and honor we give unto you. Receive our praise, O oh God. Father, receive our praise. Receive our praise, O oh Lord. 
We see the praise, we see the praise of oh God. Glory and honor we give up to you. We see the praise of oh God. This morning, as a call on our pastor for the closing prayer, and why it's coming forward, I just want you to, rem- to remind you that this is Eden Square Christian Assembly where we build the total you, and you can connect with us on all our social media platforms at Eden Square TV on Facebook and on Instagram, Eden Square underscore TV, and likewise on YouTube, Eden Square TV. And as you co- continue to fellowship with us, may the good Lord continue to bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for this week. We ask Lord God Almighty, King of Glory, as we wind down this month, let there be divine provision in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is confused or stranded, let your grace come unto him or her in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, Jesus was never stranded. Jesus was never confused. We ask you this week, there shall be clarity of purpose. There will be reconnection to the Spirit of God for those of us who missed it. And Lord, you will establish us like never before in the name of Jesus. We will pray for peace in Nigeria. We will pray for peace all over the world in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's shout seven hallelujahs. Hallelujah. 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 And the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of 